In part three, and the last lighting movie of this series, you will illuminate the same scene using artificial lighting, or man-made lights. Start by deleting the daylight system from your scene. You also want to go to the environment dialog and cancel out all values. You can access the dialog from the menu bar or by pressing the 8 hotkey. Uncheck the Use Map and then right-click and clear the background map. By the same token, disable Exposure Control. It will be re-enabled automatically as you start placing photometric lights. The first lights you create are two powerful lights meant to illuminate the courtyard. From the lighting panel, make sure you are in photometric mode and then choose Free Light. You are prompted to enable exposure control. Answer yes to that. You may be wondering why you disabled it earlier. In the environment dialog, notice that the EV value is much smaller than it was when using the daylight system. This makes sense as you need to compensate for night lighting. Dismiss the dialog for now. In the top view, place a light right under the red housing, near the Jeep on the left. In the front view, move the light up inside of the housing, but do not move it inside the light bulb. In the top view, instance the light into the second housing. You'll still need to adjust the height in the front view as the two housings are not at the same elevation. With one of the two instance lights selected, go to the Modify panel. Photometric lights are physically accurate in terms of intensity, color, attenuation, etc. The process is made easier when you choose a light type from a template. In this case, select the 400 watt lamp web preset. Notice how the light distribution changed to photometric web. The light now scatters in a specific and complex and realistic way that goes well beyond the possibilities of a mere point light. You can also choose a light color in a variety of ways. At this time, the color is set to a reference white color. You can choose other options, like in this case an incandescent filament, which is fairly yellow. Ultimately, you can even choose a Kelvin value which ranges from 1000 pink to 20,000 blue. Leave the incandescent filament active for now. Enable shadows using the ray traced option and render the camera view. The render is very bright. You'll need to do some adjustments in the environment dialog. Render the preview thumbnail. This way you can make changes in real time. Try different EV values. A value of 6 seems adequate. Try a full render in the camera view. In the top view, zoom in on the entrance of the middle bungalow. Place a free light and move it up into position in the front view. You will keep this one simple. Make it a 100 watt bulb and set its color to a cool blue, Kelvin value about 6000. Instance this light to the other bungalows. Render the view to see the results. Last, you will light the interior of the bungalow on the right. Place a free light and move it up into position. From the presets list, choose a 4-foot pendant fluorescent, 
Web. Enable ray traced shadows on this light. From the color presets list, choose a color such as fluorescent warm white. You can experiment with other colors as well. In the shape area shadows rollout, the light currently is listed as a point light and its shadows will be very crisp. However, shadows from fluorescent lights tend to be soft given that the light emanates from long tubes. Change this option to rectangle and set its value to about 0.8 by 0.4 meters. The smaller the rectangle, the crisper the shadows. Instance the light three or four times to illuminate the whole bungalow. Switch the camera view to the close-up camera and render the scene. You can see the effect of the light, but it's not very strong. Make sure one of the fluorescent lights is still selected and increase its overall intensity to 400%. Render again. This looks much better. Revert back to the courtyard camera and render again. One last thing remains. The background is pitch black. It may be appropriate for a very dark night, but let's replace the black color with an image. In the Environment dialog, click the None button next to the Environment map. In the Material Map browser, choose Maps, Standard, and then double-click on Bitmap. Choose the Desert JPEG file you downloaded for this tutorial. Notice how the thumbnail updates. The exposure control is affecting the scene geometry, but not the background. A full render at this time would look quite awkward. Enable Process Background and Environment Maps and render again. The scene is dark again, but not as dark as it was with a uniformly black background. You can almost make out the roof edges of the bungalow on the right. Open the Slate Material Editor and drag the Desert JPEG map into the editor as an instance. Double-click its node to see its properties. At the very bottom of the Parameters window, expand Output. Change the Output Amount value and see how it affects the preview thumbnail. Try a value of 3. It should be adequate for a dark background, yet visible enough to make out the detail. Render the scene to view the results. You have learned how to light a scene using different lighting scenarios. This concludes the three-part tutorial on lighting and rendering. You have also reached the end of the Getting Started movie series. Once you feel comfortable with the basics shown here, you can move on to more advanced tutorials in the other playlists on this channel.